Thomas Crooks. He graduated from Bethel Park High School in 2022. Look at what happened. Breaking news, an attempted assassination on Donald Trump at a campaign rally. These are ominous times in American politics. The drama surrounding the impending elections has seemed to shift from tirades and humor to something a little more dark, with lives potentially at risk if they haven't already been lost. Somehow, the former president survived an attempted assassination at his rally in Pennsylvania on Saturday. Since then, much speculation has centered on what went wrong with the Secret Service's protection of the president. After all, an inexperienced 20-year-old acting alone certainly wasn't supposed to cause such a high level of security breach. Ideally, the likelihood would be lower than 2%. If you haven't been informed about him, his name is Matthew Crooks, a registered Republican voter. We noticed a guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us. 50 50 feet away from us. Fortunately, expert opinions have surfaced that elucidate the genesis of this catastrophic situation. Finally, we have a comprehensive account from a former Secret Service member. Let's dig into the unfolding of events and understand how someone as seemingly inept as Matthew Crook nearly assassinated one of the most prominent figures in America today. Despite being protected by arguably the most elite security protocol in the country, an eye opener for sure. The record shows Crooks gave $15 to the Democratic aligned Progressive Turnout Project. Witness accounts placed Crooks on a roof less than 450 feet away from Trump. Tim McMillan, a former police officer, provides a detailed explanation in a compelling thread. No need to go searching for it, we're gnawing into the entire story right away. <laughs> And you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Having personally worked on several presidential and vice presidential security details, here's some of my thoughts based on the available info on the assassination attempt on Trump. The Secret Service employs a multi-tiered defense in depth approach to protective missions. An inner tier offers close protection support, these being the agents you see rushing in and surrounding Trump after the initial shots go off. The second middle tier is tasked with identifying and defending against mid-range threats, i.g. the crowd, etc. This tier is largely comprised of local and state law enforcement temporarily attached to the security detail. This is the area that I worked on prior details. Finally, you have the extend tier which covers long distance threats. This can include counter sniper details, cyber SIGINT support, and CBRN defense. People have wondered how could the counter snipers in the videos not have seen the would-be assassin prior to him getting off a shot? This is because the area of responsibility for those counter snipers on the roof behind Trump was very likely in the extend tier. Essentially, they were scanning for threats a great distance well beyond the roughly 150 meters the threat appeared. This is evidenced by the fact that the elevated counter sniper has to dramatically drop his line of sight to respond to the shooter. Secret Service advanced teams would have absolutely pre-scouted the location and identified the building the shooter used as a vulnerable spot in the defense. Which begs the question, how was this guy still able to climb on the roof and get off a shot? Based on the limited details at this point, in my opinion, the security breakdown occurred in the middle tier, which would likely include law enforcement who were supposed to be assigned to the area near the outbuildings. How that significant of a breakdown could occur is up for speculation. However, like I said, this tier is largely dependent on local law enforcement and not the Secret Service. So, speculatively, the local LEOs who were supposed to be in the area and make sure no one with a gun climbed up on the roof fucked up. People have said that witnesses saw the guy with the gun on the roof, told police, but that they failed to respond and prevent the assassination attempt. So how does that happen? Well, there's typically limited lines of communication between the Secret Service and the local LEOs working the middle tier. 
You usually have one or two local LEO liaisons who have direct communication with the Secret Service, which means communication on the ground between the local LEOs being told about the shooter are being routed through dispatch to local liaisons, then to the Secret Service. Compounding the difficulty to rapidly respond is the fact that there's always some confusion and inefficiency when multiple different LEO agencies come together to work a detail. Most of these agencies aren't used to working with each other and aren't given much information beyond a few pre-event briefings. I actually saw what can go wrong in these scenarios firsthand when President Bush's Secret Service detail almost engaged a local police SWAT counter-sniper team during the 2004 G8 summit. No one had properly communicated the local SWAT team's position, so all the Secret Service saw was heavily armed individuals with a line of sight on the President. The whole thing was set seconds away from being a tragic incident. In this same vein, there was likely some delay and confusion with the initial reports of a person with a gun on the roof, as local cops and Secret Service agents would all be trying to confirm the shooter didn't belong to one of the security support teams. So, in summary, when looking for blame in this massive security failure, if I was a betting man, I'd say the answer rests with whatever detail likely local LEOs were assigned to the area near the outbuildings. I'd also add that I worked five presidential details as a local LEO attachment. Even though I was in close proximity for each detail, in only two of them did I actually ever see the president or vice president. That was Bush while he was in the limo driving away, and Cheney, but that was because I was on the inner position, feet away from him. You're explicitly trained that your eyes are always on the crowd, surroundings, and potential threats, never on the presidents themselves for obvious reasons. Now, my experience is entirely limited to official presidential visits, which are planned at least months and in some cases a year in advance. It's likely that some of the breakdown or issues I mentioned can be exponentially increased when it comes to campaign trips, as these stops can come up or change on very short notice. There's no room for error, so that shot placement has to be absolutely precise. Based on his last statement, we can assume that the campaign rally was more of an impromptu event that was planned quickly, possibly within a week or two. As cited by various sources, leaving insufficient time to properly observe and secure the location. Authorities saying this is the lifeless body of the shooter on the roof of that building. So in summary, for everyone to understand this, the Secret Service uses a multi-layered defense strategy to protect high-profile figures like the President, involving close protection agents, local and state law enforcement for mid-range threats, and snipers for long-range dangers. In the recent assassination attempt on Trump, the shooter was closer than the sniper's usual focus. The real security lapse likely occurred in the middle tier where local law enforcement failed to secure the area near the buildings. Witnesses do say they saw the shooter somewhere near that rooftop. Despite witnesses alerting the police about the shooter on the roof, there was a delayed response due to communication issues between local law enforcement and the Secret Service. This highlights the common confusion and inefficiencies that arise when multiple agencies work together leading to significant security breakdowns, especially with less detailed planning as a result of time, as Tim McMillan mentioned. According to a former agent, Secret Service counter-sniper teams should have scoped out and advanced all those areas where there were potential threats beforehand and known what the line of sight to Trump could be. That shooter with that rifle should have never been that close to the former president of the United States at a venue like this. We can only be thankful that the former president made it through the one instance where the Secret Service malfunctioned, sparing history by making Donald Trump the first assassinated former president to be killed during a campaign rally for a second term. I'm sincerely grateful that he's doing well and recovering. And we had a short but good conversation. Mr. Trump is a former president and nominee of the Republican Party already receives a heightened level of security. And I've been consistent in my direction of the Secret Service to provide him with every resource, capability, and protective measure necessary to ensure his continued safety. 
There have been many prompt statements and apologies from the president, secret service officials, and even Democrats regarding this issue. This is not the time to be divided or to continue making ridicule of each other. Donald Trump would hope to recover quickly from his ear slit and return to the campaign grounds, possibly with a new slogan based on his Call of Duty-esque incident. He also hinted at this in a recent Truth social media post. Republican and MAGA supporters have since gone crazy over the event, but it's worth noting how Donald Trump reacted to Nancy Pelosi's attempted assassination and her husband's near-death experience. She is a crazed lunatic. What the hell was going on with her husband? Let's not ask. Let's not ask. I'll withdraw that statement. By the way, she's got a wall around her house. Obviously, in that case, it didn't work very well. This has to be the most pathetic thing for a man looking for support and sympathy in a similar situation today. And yes, we're all going to overlook it because it's Donald Trump. Sure, you might say he deserves it, but no one deserves to be taken down like that. It's a relief he survived. For the sake of the United States' peace and reputation, and that of the former president too. After all, we need to keep things normal, don't we? And today, Arizona Representative Ruben Gallego is demanding answers from the Secret Service and a letter to Director Kimberly Cheadle. Gallego says, quote, I call on those responsible for the planning, approving, and executing of this failed security plan to be held accountable and to testify before Congress immediately. Some members of Congress have questioned the Secret Service, with Representative Ruben Gallego writing to Director Cheadle to demand an investigation into the possible allocation of Secret Service protection to other presidential candidates, such as Robert F. Kennedy Jr., and to demand answers about the security breach that allowed assassination attacks on President Trump. Becoming an agent is not a job. It's not a nine to five job. It is a career, it is a life choice. Knowing the probability. Despite the crazy events of the past weekend, we have succeeded in shedding some light on the true events and the circumstances leading up to this. For those who believe it was staged, I hope this corrects your intrusive thoughts. MAGA supporters making a hell of a noise. Donald Trump bluntly told us to all move on from a high school killing spree. Don't act like he's all perfect and all. It's just terrible to see that happening. It's just horrible. So surprising to see it here. But uh, I have to get over it. We have to move forward. We have to move forward. I had a friend who was there doing Kennedy's assassination. It has never left him. I'm instructed that this investigation be thorough and swift, and the investigators will have every resource they need to get this done. We're sure going to be keeping you all updated on the failed Trump assassination attempt. Rest assured, every detail will be uncovered to ensure that such political violence never reappears on American soil again. Once again, rest in peace, Corey Comparatore. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more updates on all things politics. Share your thoughts in the comments. Is this just a casual assassination attempt, or is there something more? Until next time, stay curious.